Cell divisions begin with the compaction of DNA into X-shaped chromosomes. DNA is replicated earlier in the cell cycle and the two identical copies or chromatids are held together as a single chromosome until cell division. To successfully divide and pass on their genetic material, cells must separate their chromosomes with each daughter cell receiving exactly half. Mistakes in this process can yield cells with abnormal number of chromosomes, hallmarks of cancer, and severe birth defects. In metaphase, chromosomes line up on the equator of the dividing cell. Microtubules emanating from two poles seek out the chromosomes, growing and shrinking randomly until they come into contact with a chromosome. Chromosomes are made up of highly packaged double helix DNA and need a way to connect to the microtubules, as these tubes will ultimately pull them to two separate poles. Microtubules make contact with chromosomes at the kinetic core, which are multi-protein complexes that grab onto the probing microtubules. In order to be properly separated, the two halves of a chromosome must be attached to the tubes from opposite poles. If two chromatids become attached to tubes from the same pole, both copies would be pulled to one side, creating a daughter cell with two copies of a chromosome and another cell with no chromosome. Incorrect attachments such as these are called mono-orientation. Components of the kinetochore grab onto microtubules, but if this generates a mono-oriented chromosome, a kinase phosphorylates these components, causing the microtubule to detach. Once all chromosomes are bi-oriented, the cell is now able to separate the chromatids. In the transition from metaphase to anaphase, a protein called separase is released that cleaves the cohesin rings holding the chromatids together. The chromatids are pulled to opposite poles by depolarizing microtubules. Chromosomes have now been successfully segregated and the cell can finish division. One of the largest unanswered questions in cell division is how does the kinase know when chromosomes are correctly attached? We know that tension is an indicator of a correct attachment, but we do not know how the kinase senses this tension. Dr. Andrew Murray, professor of molecular biology at Harvard University, along with graduate student Natalie Funk have developed a model to explain how the kinase senses tension. Unlike other proposed models that place the kinase within the kinetic core, Murray and Funk propose that the kinase is attached to cohesin rings that hold the two chromatids together. When the chromosome is in mono-orientation, no tension is generated and the chromatids are not stretched. The cohesin rings are able to slide close to the kinetic core and bring the kinase close to its targets. The kinase adds negatively charged phosphates to the positively charged components of the kinetic core causing the kinetochore to release the negatively charged microtubule, and the attachment is broken. This only happens when the chromosome is in mono-orientation. When correctly bi-oriented, the tension is generated and the kinetochores are stretched 800 nanometers. The stretching forces the smaller cohesin rings to slide away. The kinase is pulled away and it is no longer in contact with the kinetic core. The phosphates cannot break the attachment. Once all chromosomes have achieved bi-oriented attachments, the cells are able to move into anaphase, cleave the cohesin holding the chromatids together, and complete cell division.